Samuel 2, we don't have any other questions? No? Okay. 1 Samuel 2, we're going to pick up around the 22nd verse of 1 Samuel 2. 1 Samuel 2, 22. Are we ready? 1 Samuel 2, 22, and it says, Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is not good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor with both the Lord and also with men. We talked about that last Sunday. Verse 27, And there came a man of God unto Eli, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my, to be my priest and to offer upon mine altar to burn incense to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Verse 29. Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, in honor of thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord of God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and, and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall be not, not an old man in thy house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. And the, and the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread. And shall say, put me, I pray thee, into one of, thy, in one of the priest's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. All right, let's uh, see if we can break this down here, verse by verse, line by line. Going back to verse 22, it said, Now Eli was very old. Of course, Eli is the priest that uh, Hannah had brought uh, her son Samuel to. So Eli is the, is the man taking care of Samuel. But he had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. I'll go ahead and, and say Phinehas since they call him Phinehas in the cartoon, Phinehas and Fur. I'll just call him Phinehas. Okay? But his two sons were evil, right? Because in verse 22, it said that uh, his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So uh, the thing about it is not only had Eli heard of all the things that his son was doing, a lot of Israel had heard about the things that his sons were doing. They knew the things that his sons were doing because we read last Sunday how... Uh, the people of Israel, they began to, to, to even they began to uh, hate to even worship the Lord at the altar, because uh, uh, Hophni and Phineas were stealing the the sacrifices, and so they began to abhor worshiping the Lord based upon these two evil sons of the of the priest Eli. All right. Now it says that they lay with the women that were assembled at the tabernacle of the congregation. You don't have to turn there. But in Exodus 38.8, it talks about how 
uh, the women would, uh, the young women would come together at the mouth of the tabernacle, and that was just something that they did uh, when it came to uh, worship. So there would be young women at the gates, and these uh, priests, because Hophni and Phineas, they were supposed to have been priests too. They were the sons of, of priests, the, the sons of Eli. Uh, they would take advantage of these women. All right. Now, this was not good on several fronts. Number one, uh, you shouldn't have intimate relationships with someone that you're not married to. That's fornication. But more importantly, um, I believe both of these sons, Phineas and Hophni, were married. I know at least one was. We'll, we'll show you the proof text for that. So they were actually, at least one of them was actually committing adultery when uh, laying with, with uh, these women. And look, look at verse 23 here. It says, And he said unto them, this is Eli saying, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Now he knows that his sons are doing evil, but instead of doing what I would call a true rebu rebuke, he just said, why are you doing this? I mean, should he have really been saying why? Was that the right response? Or should he have been saying, hey, look here, boy. You don't go around doing this evil stuff. What's wrong with you? And your brother doing the evil stuff that he's doing. If I catch y'all doing this again, I'm going to knock you so far out of this tabernacle that Google's not going to be able to find you. <laughs> That's what he should have been telling them. But he's just saying, why are you doing this? But that, that's not why. No. He, he should have disciplined his children. He should have rebuked his children. Now you say, well, these are grown men. Well, we're going to find out later that even though they were grown men, God is still going to hold Eli responsible because these grown men are in a position of leadership that is affecting the worship of God. So now, the, the, of the people's worship of God. So this is not just a case of a man sinning against man. The sons of Eli are now causing the people to sin against God. So that's even a greater offense. And God has a problem with it. And we're going to see here that God is, even though his sons are grown, they're, they're old enough to have wives, God is still going to hold Eli accountable for not restraining his sons and not doing the, the part that he should have done to keep his, his sons from committing such evil. We're going to read a little more about that, okay? Do we have any questions or comments so far? Okay, so you see right here, uh, he says in verse 24, Nay, my sons, for it is not good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. Well, Eli, if you see that he's making the Lord's people to transgress, you need to kick these guys out of the tabernacle. Hire you some men and have your sons thrown out the tabernacle. Just like if you have unruly children in your, in your home and you're too weak and feeble to deal with them, you call the police and have the police drag the child out your house. That sounds kind of cruel, doesn't it? If, if you're not able to put them out yourself, you're going to need a little help. But it was even... Kicking them out probably cause the church people that go there to lose respect for him. Yes, absolutely. And that's the lesson that, that we can learn, that if evil is not dealt with, and it doesn't matter if, you know, if it's my children or the preacher's children or whatever, if that sin it has, is not dealt with, it can cause problems for the people who are trying to worship God. It can interfere with, with, with God's worship, and God's not going to have that. Well, it's going to get worse if you don't deal with it. It will only get worse if you don't deal with it. It will create a schism in the body of, of Christ. It can cause all kinds of problems. So we're going to see here later on, we've already read that God had to send another man of God. Eli is a man of God, but he's a man of God who's backslidden. He's in error. And so God has to send another man of God over to rebuke Eli and tell Eli what he should have done. All right? Now... When it comes to raising children, God gives us pretty clear instructions on how we should raise children. Thank goodness for the King James Bible. Thank goodness for God's word made available to us in the form of a book. All we have to do is to follow the instructions that are in this book, and it will tell us how we should properly raise our children according to God's way. Not according to Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil, 
but according to God's way, how we should raise our children. I want you to keep your place here, and I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs and bookmark Proverbs, because we're going to stay in it for a moment. Now, we could go to some other proof texts. I can take you to Hebrews and the New Testament. I can take you to some other places that talk about how to raise children. But I'm just going to give you some stuff out of the book of Proverbs, and uh, we'll just go from there. Proverbs 19.18. If you turn to your middle of the Bible, you hit Psalms. Proverbs will be to your right. If you wind up in uh, Ecclesiastes or Song of Solomon, you've gone too, too far to your, to your uh, right. But you should be in, uh, after Psalms, you should hit Proverbs. And Proverbs, we're going to go to 19.18, I believe. 19.18. Now, I've got to find it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, are we there? Proverbs 19:18. Look what the King James Bible says. It says, Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crime. Okay? That means we need to discipline our kids, and we need to do it early while there is still hope. Because once they get grown, they, it becomes a lot tougher. There is a reason that when babies are born in this world, that children are smaller than their parents. God did that on purpose. So if a child's doing wrong, you can grab the child and set him over on this side of the room if you got to pick him up. You can't pick up a six-foot man. So children are small for a reason. Chasing them while there is hope. Because once they, they get to a certain age, it may be too late. Chasing them while there is hope. Let's go to another uh, text. Go to uh, Proverbs 20.11. Proverbs 20.11. Proverbs 20.11. Just, just to the right of Proverbs 19, it says, are we there? It says, even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. You as a parent, you should know if your child's cutting up or not. When the teacher calls you at, uh, on your job from, and, and says your child's been acting up in school, you, you know not to go up there and, and cuss the teacher out. You know your child's been bad. The scripture says even a child is known by his doings. So you as a parent, you know, you know where, you, where you are with your child and what needs to be done to, to raise your child, right? You just have to make the decision, are you going to do it or not, all right? Let's go to Proverbs 22 and 6. This is a famous passage. Proverbs 22 and 6. Proverbs 22 and 6. Many of you could probably quote this by memory. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Now, I can just give a personal testimony of that because, um, you know, I got saved when I was 12 years old. But guess what? I wasn't perfect. I still did some things as a teenager and, and as a young adult that was not proper. But I thank the Lord that my parents had instilled in me early on the truth of the word of God. So I did stray. But then one day the Lord spoke to my heart and said, hey, you need to get back on the right track. And so... I departed, but I came back. Okay? If you train up the child in the way he should go, uh, that says when he is old, and guess what? I'm old now. I got the gray hairs to prove it and the bald head. He will not depart from it. All right? So this, these are promises that are coming from God on how you should raise your children. I want you to look at one other proof text. Some of you may not like this next one. It's, uh, uh-oh, is my time up? No. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, my time's up. Proverbs 23 and 13. Proverbs 23 and 13. Let me know when you're there. Okay, Proverbs 23 and 13. Hold on to your, to your horses for this one. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from where? Hell. Hell. Now, beat, you look at that, that's a hard word. And so people may say, oh, well, this is not talking about abuse. Let's, let's get that straight. Okay, I personally believe that anyone who abuses a child should, should I think there's a, I don't have proof text to prove it, but I believe there's a special place in hell for people who abuse children because that's just wicked, especially someone who can't defend themselves, innocent children. I believe there's a special place in hell for them. I can't prove that from the Bible, but that's just... To, to just me. Below. Yeah, they ought to be below the lowest part of hell, anyone who yeah. abuses the child. But this is, when it says beat your child, it's not talking about abuse. It's talking about inflicting enough pain upon your child to where they know that there will be consequences for their action. Okay? 
Um, I'll give you a, a, an example. And, and, and I, I want y'all to, to understand this. Um, not talking about abuse, but talking about putting enough hurt on the child to where the child says, hey, if I go in the, in the kitchen and grab that cookie out the cookie jar without checking with mom, I got to weigh the consequences because I know the last time that happened, uh, I got, I got a, whipping. a whooping. Is getting that cookie without her permission worth, my, worth that whooping? And you got to weigh that. Now, if you just tap your child on the hand, they're going to reach in that cookie jar every time because they say, Psst, all they're going to do is tap me on the hand. I'm going to get that cookie. Brother Robbie? When I was 10 years old. My mother never whipped me. My yeah. stepdad is the one that did that. He yeah. always tell me yeah. twice, and on the third time yeah. he did it, yeah. he whipped me. Yeah. And he whipped me hard enough yeah. that I felt it. Yes, yes. When I was 10, yes. they had separated, and yeah. my mom was going to whip me. Yes. And she bent me over the bed yeah. and hit me four or five times, and I laughed at her. Because it wasn't doing the job. Didn't hurt at all. Didn't hurt at all. Didn't even hurt. Yeah. Wrong thing to do. Oh, no. She wore me out after that. Oh, she got you after that, huh? That was the last whipping I ever got. Oh, boy. Yeah. Learned my lesson. Amen. Amen. That's good. You know, once. If your mom is whipping you and it don't hurt, don't tell them it don't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember one time when I had gotten, I don't know how old I was, but I had gotten to the point where I was taller than my mom. And then I was in the kitchen with her, and I bowed up on her. Just crazy. I just lost it, you know. Just crazy. I bowed up on my mom, and then she knew that I was too big for her to bend me over and whoop me. But then she reached over and grabbed the frying pan. Oh. <laughs> and then I said, yes, mom. Because <laughs> she was going to use whatever she had at her disposal to bring me into submission. But fortunately, she did not have to use that frying pan because she knew I would have to teach this class one day. <laughs> okay. But uh, it, it's, it's important that we, and the scripture tells us, and when it says beat, some people misinterpret that, but it's basically, I'm sorry? Jose says that, Jose thinks that you can't hit kids anymore, but I'm like, yes, you can. I mean, you can still spank your kids. These days, even you are grounded for a reason. Yes. I call the cops on you. Yeah. Oh, you mean because they'll call the, the, the yeah. Child Protective Services or, or CPS or, or whatever? Yeah, this is not about abuse, but this is about disciplining your, your, your children. And these are instructions that come from God. God is serious about this because he says the rod of correction will deliver your child from hell. God is serious about this. Now, yeah, we do have nowadays where the government tries to, to take the role of the parent, which is ungodly and is not supposed to happen. We've had the uh, Bible study in Romans 13 where we talked about the institution of the family, the institution of the church, the institution of government, and when they're supposed to intersect and when they're not supposed to intersect. And that's a case, as long as it's not abuse, the government has no right to tell you how you should discipline your child as long as it's not abuse. They're out of line. But you did the right thing. You, you still are obligated, even at the threat of being put in jail, to raise your family according to the word of God. Even at the threat of being put in jail, you're still obligated to raise your family, to run your household according to, to, to God's word. That's, that's what you should do. And let the chips fall where they may. Uh, the children, that, the kids that had their feet under my table, they were not my children, but I told their parents, if they're in my house, they're now, you know, in, in, in a different country. And they're going to be disciplined according to these country rules. And, and, and when I discipline the children, I've, I've spanked them, I would tell their parents, oh, by the way, your child got out of line, so I whooped them. Did I enjoy it? No. And that's another thing, too, as a parent. Sometimes you have to take a time out. If you're angry, you don't want to lay hold of your child when you're angry because you may accidentally hurt your child more than you, than you want. But you still need to discipline that child and put enough hurt on them where they know better, but not to the point of abuse. Is, is that all right? And so, yes, sir, Brother Robbie? Uh -huh. That's what I would always do after they would calm down and mm -hmm. crying and everything. Mm -hmm. I'd call them back in there and, mm -hmm. and set them down and tell mm -hmm. them, you know, why I did it. Mm -hmm. and I loved them and give them a hug and all oh you're one of those parents huh? Yeah. I tell you what my, that used to kill me to no end my mother used to beat the fire out of me 
And then she'll say, now come give your mama a hug. Like, what are you? You gonna beat me and then you want? She would do it every time and I was like, beat me again, please. I do not want to hug you. She would do that every, oh, I, you know, I would remember it like it was yesterday. So you're one of them. Okay. Now, I mean, there's nothing in the Bible that says you can't do that, so I'm not, you know. understand why you did it, and you explain to them why you did it, that they have to mind, they have to do what they're told. But, you know, and I appreciate what you're saying, and that's, and that's good, but the Bible doesn't say to, uh, to uh, explain to your child to deliver them from hell. The Bible says to beat your child to deliver them from hell. So the explaining is okay. But sometimes parents will skip the beat part and they'll just try to sit down with little Johnny or little Poindexter and explain away the situation. That's, not a, that's Dr. Phil, but that's not according to the word of God. Well, each child responds differently to discipline. And one child, you can, you can talk mean to them and threaten them and stuff like that. Yeah. And they, they respond to that. Others, yeah. You know, you have to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they need different levels of punishment. Like, you know, my oldest, I said I'd throw him off the Lake Louisville Bridge, and the other, I said I'd go Kung Fu Panda on him and chop him in the throat. So, you know, you have to use different levels of, 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 of punishment. Okay, and don't y'all panic when I know I said that the other day, maybe it was several months ago, I said that I was going to throw my oldest off the Lewis, Lake Louisville Bridge. Some of y'all may remember that. But that, that wasn't abuse because he can swim. <laughs> now, if I had thrown my youngest off the bridge, then you could call me for abuse because he's not a strong swimmer. Anyway. Yes, ma'am. So, for like, my nephew, uh-huh. he is an unruly, does not listen, mm-hmm. my sister thinks that she can negotiate with him. Mm-hmm. He's two. Mm-hmm. He's a little terrorist. Mm-hmm. And she's one of those ones that just skips over the discipline part. And just goes, yeah. oh, we don't do that. Yeah. With Noah... Yeah. He's acting up. I'll look at him and I'll tell him, I will pop you right here and now if you do not stop. Yes, She's like, yes. okay, got it. You've done it before. I right, you. right. And he stopped acting yeah, up. And, and, yeah, and sometimes all you got to do is, is do it once. And to go back to, to your point, each child may be different. Yeah. But you need to gauge your child. Like for one child, like my, my youngest, I'll say, hey, son, when he was little, I'll say, hey, son, go get my shoes. He'll go get my shoes. He'll bring them back. And I says, okay, okay, son, the next day, son, go get my shoes. He go gets my shoes and bring them back. Okay. Now, I know that he knows, he, he comprehends what I'm saying, so he doesn't have a learning disability. He doesn't have a, a hearing problem. So now I know, and plus he did what I asked him to do. So now I know what category he's in, I can deal with him. Okay. Now, the next day I say, hey, son, go get my shoe. No. Okay, now we got a problem. Because you have demonstrated that you know how to go get my shoes. So now I got to discipline him. Y'all understand that? Now, if it was a child, I said, hey, go get my shoes, and the child looked at me crazy, I can't discipline that child because that child has, you know, a learning disability or whatever. You have to gauge each child differently. So I'm not saying it's a one-size-fits-all situation, but God does say that don't hold withhold correction. God does say that if you beat him with the rod, you shall deliver his soul from hell. All right? So you just need to know when to apply that and when not to apply that. Now, I'm not just all about just jumping on the kid for the sake of jumping on the kids. There are times where my children deserved a a, a beating, but I said, I just put my hand on my shoulder, on his shoulder, and said, son, you know you did wrong, right? He says, yeah. You know the Lord doesn't like what you did. Oh, Oh, by the way, always bring that up too. Let them know God just doesn't live in church. Let, let them know God is, is with them wherever they go. I said, Lord, I said, son, you know the Lord was disappointed in what you just did. I let them know. Even if they're not saved, tell them about God. So that they know that wherever they are, they're not alone. God's watching. So I always, I always mention that. You know God's disappointed in what you did, right? Sometimes I'll put my hand on the shoulder and say, okay, I will whip you, but I'm going to let, let you give you another chance. Thank you, sir. Okay. And let them go. Because Jesus had mercy on me. So why not I give mercy to my child when he does wrong? Okay. Now God will chastise me too. 
but he also has mercy on me. And so I should do the same for the children as well. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So did, did that kind of, I know we kind of spent a little time on this. Did that kind of answer those, those questions? But God gives us instructions on how we should uh, discipline and raise our children. Now, it is incumbent upon us as parents. Sometimes you can do all that you can do and your child still grows up rotten. But guess what? That child is, has to be accountable for himself. You cannot save that child. That child has to come to Jesus on his own or on her own. All you can do is what you can do and then pray for that child. But, you don't, but even as a saved person, guess what? We still got to uh, be accountable and stand before God because there are certain w- rewards that he's going to give his children when we, when we get to heaven. You don't want to lose a reward because you didn't discipline your child. Okay? So even if your child grows up and, and they become a, a bank robber or a terrorist or whatever, you make sure that you do what thus says the Lord to the best of your ability. So that when you're standing before the throne, you can say, God, I did my best to raise this child according to your word. Instead of in this situation, we're going to see here in a moment, if I'm not out of time, where the man of God had to come to Eli and tell Eli, Eli, you didn't do everything you should have done to raise your children right. I would hate to have that testimony standing before God and God tell me, you know, you could have done better with your kids. You should have thrown the young one off the Lake Louisville Bridge as well. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Not about the oldest one, but the youngest one because he can't swim. Okay. Um, any other questions? I just to ask yes, yes, yes. Real quick, Mm-hmm. With the discipline, if it came to a point where I wasn't able to get away and discipline them in private, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody walks in the bathroom and you're trying to take care of your children, yeah. that God would protect and that I didn't need to fear what might happen. Amen. 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 Yeah, we, we can't have that fear, and, and there, unfortunately, that, you know, and like I said, there are some good hearted people who they want to, if you spot abuse, it needs to be reported. Uh, but if it's a situation where a child is being disciplined, uh, you know, in an appropriate way where, you know, they're, you're not leaving any marks or gashes on their flesh or something like that, you know, um, then you need to say, you know, hey, you want to borrow my belt? You know, <laughs> help them out a bit. You're kidding me. I wish I was. Oh, the clock is so disrespectful. We didn't even get past verse, what, 24 or something? We got stuck. Man, okay. Well, we're going to have to wrap up. I'm, uh, I apologize, you all. Uh, we'll pick up with verse 25, try to see if we can get to the rest of this chapter next time. I know we kind of got stuck, stuck on the uh, raising your child thing, but it's going to play an important role here later on in uh, verses, uh, verses 29. In verse 29, where the man of God has to go to Eli and say, Why kick ye? at my sacrifice and my offering which I have commanded in my habitation and look how what the man of God and God speaking through him he's saying you honor your sons above me you're, you're putting your children before, you, uh, before you, you put me God and God has a problem with that okay and so we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that later.